participating this morning uh, with the LOSFA Advisory Commission. And I would now like to call this meeting to order and ask uh, Rhonda to call the roll, please. Good morning, Ms. Bailey. Good morning, I'm here. Dr. Cable. Ms. Coleman. Here. Dr. Davis. Dr. Henderson. Ms. Lawson. Ms. Talbert. She's there. She's there. There she is. Ms. Merricks. Mr. Powell. I know he's here. He's gonna have to unmute, but he's here. And um, Mr. Taylor Jarrell, you have four, which does not represent a quorum, but in conjunction with the, as posted on the agenda, we can go into an executive committee session. And uh, do we need a formal motion to go into an executive session, Robin? Yes. Okay, may I have a motion? Uh, please to go into executive session. A motion. Thank you. A second, please. And this is Ms. Talbot, our second. <laughs> Thank you, Charmaine. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. We'll go into executive session. Uh, so we will do that. And all those in favor say aye. I guess. I, we're in executive session and uh, thank you all. And because we are, um, everybody's got things to do. Uh, I will also remind us that there are very few of us to make the motions and second the motion. So we'll all have to be paying attention. So thank you very much. Okay, the next item of business is, get back to my, um, we have the certification of the virtual meeting, which you have seen. Uh, and then we have introductions and announcements. And I know we held some of these from the last meeting. So maybe we can take care of these today. Okay, Ms. Coleman, can you give me just a second? Andrew, sure. I need um, co-host privileges to be able to share the PowerPoint, please. You can, you can take as much time as you want. Should be good now. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> so under, I'm sorry, there we go. So uh, congratulations uh, are in order. Then we held this back. Uh, so uh, Dr. Francis would be able to be with us. So we want to give a big shout out to her and her accomplishments in earning her PhD. Dr. Francis, would you like to say a few words? Thank you all for recognizing me. I'm free and I'm just happy to be done. <laughs> Fantastic job. Yeah, life. fantastic job. Congratulations. Um, anybody else have some other comments? So, and you also, I, I, all the photos that I see of you, Dr. Francis, are always quite good. Thank you so much. You're well. quite, quite photogenic. Um, <laughs> congratulations. I know it's a, it's a, it's a haul, especially when you're working and raising a family and doing all of those things. So, congratulations. Absolutely. It's a weight lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, any others? I think we do have another slide. Uh, Rhonda, you want to advance the slide to see if we have the other pictures? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> we promised that we would show the pictures of uh, Miss Brown's uh, granddaughter, Zoe Ann and Robin's uh, baby. So I think, uh, I'm not sure if Ms. Brown was able to join us today. Yes, she's on. Alice, do you wanna give us a little progress uh, report on Zoe? Oh, thank you. She's doing well. She's already uh, three months and uh, getting bigger and um, she's doing well. So I just wanted to share a picture. Thank you. We love it. And uh, Robin, you wanna give us an update? 
So that's William, and he is one month and two days old today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a little bitty thing. Uh, but he's growing well. He had his one month appointment Tuesday, and he's doing well. Fantastic. Yeah, and as we can see from the photos, the one month young man was born with a good head of hair. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> And it's hard for me to see Zoe because she's got the traditional um, I'm a girl bow on her head. So I can't see what the top of her head looks like, but she's got some. Yeah, hair. she has a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how are they sleeping? Anybody? Are they sleeping well, Zoe's well? not okay. sleeping very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, okay. goes, she goes through spurts, but sometimes she's doing well, but most times she's not. But um, yeah, they're managing. <laughs> we don't have to deal with it at night, so we're good. <laughs> Miss Brown, I love the emphasis on the word there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, they are certainly cute and adorable. Thank you for sharing. Oh, wait, did you all start your uh, accounts for them as 529s? We're still waiting for the for our the social security number. <laughs> we'll do it. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, what else? Okay, next we have approval of the minutes from May thirteenth of twenty twenty one. I hope you have all had a chance to read through them. And if so, then I will entertain a motion for the minutes to be approved as presented. So, this is very. Uh, motion for the minutes to be approved. Thank you, Barry. Do I have a second? Charmaine, you may, who, who we have left? Brooks approves second. All right, good morning, Brooks. Thank you, thank you, good job. Good okay. morning, I just got off mute. I just got off mute. <laughs> All right, Rhonda, let me off mute. <laughs> That's good. We the uh, seconds are important, so it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Good job. Thank you. Next, we have public comments. Any public comments? No, ma'am. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Moving on, we have the program updates, and the first one then are the able report with uh, Miss Underwood. Good morning. Uh, we'll start out with ABLE. I uh, wanted to let y'all know that uh, we have had a huge increase in the opening of ABLE accounts. We had 72 opened in April and uh, 62 were opened in May. And I think this was due in large part to the ease documentation requirements for the ABLE accounts. Um, for a uh, start, uh, May was 529 month and we had a um, $529 grand prize campaign that was done over social media. We had um, a lot of participation in that as well as uh, there was a $529 um, um, scholarships that were given away uh, for 529 month. And uh, Dr. Francis will touch on that later in her report. Um, we also had uh, on the uh, morning news uh, on uh, WVLA TV, uh, we had a, a, a start a promotional spot that promoted the uh, 529 month as well as our uh, new uh, partnership with You Promise. Um, and Dr. Francis also will touch on that later on. Um, for K-12, for those that have not heard, uh, the uh, tax deduction was signed by the governor for K-12 accounts. Uh, that's to go into effect uh, January, uh, tax year starting January 1 of 22, uh, offering a $1,200 deduction uh, per account for a single filer, $2,400 uh, deduction uh, for a joint filer. Uh, there's certainly been an appetite for the deduction for the K-12 accounts uh, by the account owner, so I know they'll be pleased with that. Um, as you'll notice, uh, for start savings, we've got uh, 71,289 active accounts. 
with an account balance closing in April of $1,320,740,483.95. For start K-12, 1,573 accounts, 8,707,458.81. And for ABLE, 465 accounts with a total deposits of 2,508,339.14. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. A quick question. I can't remember, uh, but someone there knows. When, when did we... Was it, I think it was, was it Senator Landrieu who, who promoted the start, Smart Start or whatever? And what year was that? The start accounts. Uh, they started in 1997. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anybody have any questions or comments for Ms. Underwood? All right, moving on. Thank you very much. Next, thank we you. have the public and communications update. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, Dr. Francis. Let me say that again. Dr. Hey. Francis. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so as, as Terry mentioned, uh, last month was we celebrated 529 Day for the full month of May. Um, Terry and our public information officer, Brandy, uh, Morrison, they um, interviewed with WVLA about the LASFA and start with You Promise Partnership and our social media campaign, and they did a phenomenal job. Um, this is, I believe this was Terry's second interview to uh, help get the word out about um, start and about You Promise. So kudos to Terry and Brandy for that. Um, Louisiana is number one in the nation in FAFSA completion for a third time. So that was super exciting. We highlighted this in our um, LASFA in the news and WAFB immediately picked it up. And right after that, Louisiana Radio Network contacted us to interview about this as well. Next slide. So again, piggybacking off of, uh, before you press play, Rhonda, piggybacking off of what Terry mentioned. So we promoted 529 Day throughout the month of May, highlighting the importance of saving um, for college um, through themed activities for students and families. The first, like she mentioned, the first five participants in the activities won $29 each uh, to be deposited into a start account. And at the end of the campaign, we had a grand prize winner who received $529 deposited into a start account. So along with the different activities we had with scavenger hunts and um, you see in the graphic to the right, family week, we also interviewed some of our youth panels. So we wanted to press play and let you guys see them featured and what they had to say about saving for college. Make sure it's not connected to the headphones. You may have to pause it, so it may be connected to your headphones. It's playing on my end. Yeah, disconnect your headphones. I don't have headphones connected. <laughs> oh. um, okay, so if we can't feature it, we'll definitely make sure that it's, um, it is included in the packet. So if you right click on the image, you'll be able to play it that way um as well but sorry you won't be able to see it but they were super cute and they had a lot to say about how they would save money i think a lot of adults can learn from them uh let's go on to the next slide Rhonda. Rhonda? <laughs> she must be listening to the video. Yeah, boy. 
I'm going to definitely have to go back and hear this. They are just. I know. I'm going to. Enthusiasm. We're going to send it out through an email so you can get it right away. It's really Thank cute. You. I'm sorry. It was it was working on my end. I'm sorry. Uh, there it goes again. Hold on. All right. There we go, Brittany. Sorry about that. So the American College Application Campaign, ACAC, held its national convening for state coordinators. And during the convening, LCAM, Louisiana College Application Access Month, was highlighted. Um, so in a speed around presentation resources, the basis of the new initiative and plans for expansion were shared to coordinators from across the country. So Kayla Grove, our public information officer is our state lead in LCAM and she did a phenomenal job hosting this and providing resources um, for the coordinators throughout the nation. So they're all partnering up to help promote, um, you know, the assistance and support for completing college applications. Next slide. And so this is something that we really wanted to highlight today. So our staff in public information and communications, we, as you all know, we provide virtual office hours. We have customers. We answer the phones for constituents to continue to help them even in the midst of COVID. And so we are continuing to receive rave reviews for their efforts. We value LASPA's brand and we know that how we treat our students and parents outside of the agency correlates to how a student or parent, parent formulates their opinion of LASPA. Um, and as you can see, the feedback was phenomenal. So uh, we have, thank you so much for the prompt response. This was very helpful. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. This is the best customer service I've ever received in my life. Your supervisor should know you all are doing amazing. Thank you so much. And then someone else said, thank you so much. I saw that in my account as well. I truly appreciate your help with everything. You definitely made this process easier than I expected. So I really wanted to just you know, give a round of applause to our team and our public information and communications, because whether they're working in the office or working at home, they're answering phones nonstop, responding to customer emails, you know, uh, conducting virtual office hours via Zoom, and still working with us to, you know, push out phenomenal campaigns. So super proud of them. And I think that that's all I have for today. That's great. And I also want to say that I appreciate the students the customers who take the time to give people the feedback. Everybody needs to, the, the thank yous are much appreciated on both sides. Absolutely. And it's nice for the students to do that for you all. And it's nice for you all to do that for the students also. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Okay, moving on, I think we have the OS field outreach services update. Dr. Dr. Cobb, is that where we are? Nope, yes. I'm just looking at a different thing here. Go ahead. We're on the student engagement update. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Lavonia Malvo speaking. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, here's a, just a listing of what um, our engagement unit will be targeting. Again, it was only about a month ago at our last meeting that I was first presented and introduced to you. Good to see you again, Ms. Coleman. Um, six weeks in, just have a brief update on where we have gone so far and where we're heading. I'm not gonna read the slide verbatim, but it give you a listing of who we're connecting and, and to whom. And so this month we've begun to reach out to uh, various institutional partners such as NSU, speaking with their ROTC regarding uh, access of their uh, junior ROTCs, uh, making them aware of military scholarships, working with, um, NSU, a Goodwill partner, uh, and some foster youth in connecting them with some of the awesome summer camp opportunities that LFOS has coming up and just showing and modeling the interconnectedness of our SE unit along with LFOS and all things lost folk. Also, we are excited about the uh, community partnerships that we're, we're building uh, with regards to seeking extramural funding to support the operations of our network groups, but also to provide internship uh, opportunities and possible stipend opportunities for our participants of our network groups. I wanna say right now we have about, you know, aside of our three initial uh, network groups, we have the possibility of growing about three or four more before year end. So this whole concept is definitely developing 
and uh, allowing us to get a solid footing in just what student engagement unit will be about. We're working across uh, systems partnerships uh, with collaboration with some of our LCTCSs uh, with regards specifically Baton Rouge Community College's peer-to-peer -peer initiatives and uh, just uh, working beautifully with them, helping them to grow their own network groups. Uh, we're looking at today, I'll be reaching out to some of our municipal partners and building relationships on how we can engage even with their efforts to build uh, dialogue in their communities around college access and success and all of that. So uh, working awesomely with this, this thing we know as Lasco with their their, their PIC comms unit, their IT unit and LFOS and all, all things involved here, uh, working with to promote the com completers fund, uh, working in partnership with that, beginning to launch some possible inroads on how we can make that scholarship availability known to our communities. So just a little of what we've done within the six weeks of our existence. Thank you. Any any questions or comments? Am I correct in assuming that this is just um, this is a nice segue into or and or beginning, whatever would be the correct word for the uh, MJ Foster Promise Program? It yes. will certainly be yeah one of the things that we use to promote it. Yeah, you will be able to. You got you got a running you got a running head start on yes. that certainly. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have Dr. Cobb, awesome Good outreach services update. Good morning. Good morning. So we can go to the next slide, please. So um, this morning I am um, reporting live from Southeastern Louisiana University, um, which is my alma mater, my undergraduate alma mater. Um, they are hosting camps here. So we'll go over that today to talk a little bit about the camps that we're offering this summer, um, including the one today. We'll have a partnership uh, highlight for um, Tara High School, Glen Oaks High School, and Neville High School. I highlight some initiatives. Um, the initiative where I reported from last um, time we met was Louisiana Day at the Capitol, um, a partnership update with NSU, and also talk about the FAFSA Now pilot a bit. Rhonda, you can go to the next slide. <laughs> and I see uh, Andrew said lion up in the um, in the chat. So he's a he's a lion too. He's a, <laughs> a, a Southeastern uh, alum too. Yes, yes. I love everything about this campus. Um, so um, as you see on the screen, these are our summer program offerings um, here. Um, In-person camps that Southeastern is offering this, um, this summer, they're offering the tiny house, which is actually happening um, this, th this week. Um, it's the pre-med, it's happening next week, chemistry and physics, the following in the last week of the month, building a drone. So um, the students um, in the camp today, that what's happening with them today, they're in a design and build um, part of the day. In the, the second part of the day, they're in welding. And um, basically they're learning the concepts around that. And the beautiful thing about this is they're understanding the programs of study that are offered here, even the two year and the certifications that are involved in the same field of study. They're um, also making a birdhouse, a uh, metal birdhouse that they'll be taking home with them today because today is the last day of this camp. So a lot of awesome things actually happening with our students in these camps. Um, again, Tech, Louisiana Tech, I'm doing a presentation with them a little bit later. Um, they're offering um, these um, types of experiences for our students, um, as well as NSU and GSU. You can go to the next slide, please. Next slide, Rhonda. Okay, thank you. So on this slide, um, starting on your left, we definitely want to um, highlight this award recognition. So pictured below, you see um, one of our um, regional coordinators, Darius Spurlock, and he was a former Gear Up student and he's working for the program. He's actually helping um, Gear Up students now as a regional coordinator and students just across the state um, um, as um as a former Gear Up student. So he actually received this award on behalf of LASPA from the administration of um, Glen Oaks High School. And um, this is saying a lot because when we first started working with um, Glen Oaks High School, 
um, several years ago, they only had four TOPS recipients, um, four TOPS eligible students. And, you know, since that time, we've seen their numbers grow um, in that area. So definitely um, been working closely with that, that school, that community, and um, we appreciate the partnership. And as you can see there, they're, um, they appreciate the partnership as well. So wanted to highlight that. Um, in the middle, you see um, Educators Rising State Conference and all of the wonderful awards that Neville High School, so that's one of our schools in the North that we support, that they actually, um, you know, were awarded um, from participating in this conference. The Educators Rising um, initiative is a, a national initiative and is so important because it actually helps to identify students and um, provide a network or a, um, a group or a club, whereas those students can actually learn more about the field and get the support as they, um, you know, transition or um, enter into um, teacher programs. And um, th the importance of this is, as you know, that there has been a drop in teacher prep programs and um, there's definitely needs to be more diversity in teachers. And most importantly, we would not be where we are today had it not been for, a, for teachers. So definitely um, more to come on that. One of our regional coordinators in the North, Ms. Jody, Cole actually participated in a training at um, NSU with um, um, earlier this week and um, it went, went, went really well. So we'll definitely be um, doing more of these um, type of clubs or type of initiatives in other schools. Um, in the other schools who participated this week were Red River, schools from Red River and also from um, Sabine along with Miss Jody. But definitely I'm um, looking to make sure this is um, more integrated in other schools as we support them around the state because it's a very important initiative. And on the right side, um, as you can see, this is a partnership highlight with Tara High School. And this is so important because you know the research around parent involvement is so important because as parents are involved, the more likely students are to matriculate and persist in post-secondary education. So this is very important. This, these, this, these parents were actually, um, um, they were recognized by Tara High School with their, their um, interactions and their support of their students. And four of their students actually participated in our programs and are successful today. Joshua and Noah, as you see on the slides, were Europe students. So they were in the same cohort as, as Darius, um, our regional coordinator. So one was a 2014 graduate, the other one was a 2015 graduate, and they are doing really well now. And coming, coming forward a little bit, you see um, Sarah here, she was a 2018 graduate. So she was, she was supported through state funding and she's doing well. And finally, we have our 2021 graduate, Josiah, and he is actually, you know, he actually participated in our um, program through state funding and um, he is doing well as well. So really, really, proud of those parents, proud of the students, and um, really just honored, you know, just to be a part of the work that's actually helping families like these and their students um, enter into and succeed in post-secondary. Next slide. Okay, so last time we met, I was actually at the Capitol. And so this is just a little highlight of the students who were there. They had a blast. So Timony, our youth advocacy specialist, you had them do some um, leadership activities on the, um, on the steps. She um, actually um, made sure that they had um, some activities inside where they um, understood the, the importance of um, how Europe and how state funding is actually um, awarded to us federally and um, through the, um, the state budgets and how that, how that actually um, helps the initiatives or funds the initiatives that they participate in and just putting everything in perspective for those students and um, I thought that it was really great because um, as we, you know, brought them in, you know, due to COVID and, you know, everything, all the, you know, you still have the, 
the actual parameters around, you know, how many people you bring in those types of things. They did not know if they would be able to, you know, you know, if somebody was coming to talk to them or if they would be able to go into a session, which they didn't this time, but they were prepared. So when they got off the bus, they were, you know, rehearsing what they would say. And, you know, so it was just really um, beautiful to me to see how how um, actually um, serious this was to them and how vested they were in actually participating in this event and how engaged they were with the event and um, just in tune with everything. So really um, was a great day with the students over at Louisiana Europe Day, um, you know, the last time we met. And on the right side of the um, slide, you actually see the transition event that we actually um, partnered with NSU. So um, with our Gear Up program, we have students um, who um, graduate through the Gear Up program once a year. And this year we did a pilot transition event. We made sure that um, BIPC, which um, many of our students from, from Sabine Parish either transition into BIPC or they transition into Northwestern. So we did a transition event um, with them and um, they had their financial aid department, first year experience, their freshman connectors. So other students who actually work with their um, near peers to work with the um, incoming freshmen to connect them to the campus. So very engaging experience and um, definitely we'll do more of these um, next year with other post-secondary institutions. And um, last slide, please. Okay, so as Dr. Francis mentioned earlier, we are number one in the nation. So we're very excited about that. So this is just a, a FAFSA, I shouldn't say just, there's nothing just about this. So this is a FAFSA, <laughs> you know, the, this is the FAFSA pilot um, data snapshot. These are the, the schools who stepped up and said, hey, I wanna participate or I'm participating in this FAFSA pilot to, to try to get as many done at, by February as um, possible. So um, we still have some that we want to make sure we get those numbers up um, even um, higher. So we're working on with the error, with the error report. So working very closely with Dr. Francis and her team and our team in um, making sure that the students who have FAFSA errors can get those completed. And I know that Ms. Barry Bailey, she's nonstop with um, her outreach as well through DOE and uh, making sure that these um, FAFSAs get done. So that's all I have. Thank you so much. Anybody? Comments or questions? And we thank all of those people who are involved. It's it's amazing to see the 92% and 100% and 95%. People are working hard to get that. Thank you very much. All right, next is scholarship and grants update. Um, Ms. Paul. I actually think Ms. Um, Paula Smith is going to be giving the update. I'm sorry, I failed to change the name on there. Good morning. Good morning. I will be presenting this morning for Ms. Deborah while she in her absence for the Bessie tuition for teachers billing update. In addition to the fall and spring, we have seven summer recipients totaling the amount of $5,089.16. Of the GO grant allocation, we had $3,800.17 remaining, and we have $3,800 of that amount waiting to be processed on tonight. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, John R. Justice, we have um, selected our awardees for the public defenders and for the prosecutors. We are waiting now for their documentation before the awards are made. For the Youth Challenge Grant update, we have not received any recipients for the summer term at this time. The next one. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Questions, comments? Okay, next we move to the um, top update, Mr. Hunt. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we've basically spent our original TOPS allocation, uh, but fortunately the governor signed the supplemental bill yesterday, so um, <laughs> we're all good. Um, uh, we've been holding a few hundred thousand dollars in TOPS bills for a couple of weeks, uh, but we should be able to pay those 
as early as next week. Um, the next few steps are kind of out of LASPA's hands. We have to let the budget office and, um, uh, and the division uh, uh, do some uh, back office uh, stuff to, to actually give us the money. Um, uh, sometimes that's a couple of days, sometimes it's a little bit more uh, uh, than a couple of days. So, um, uh, and other loss for fiscal news, the governor also signed HB1 yesterday. So uh, the budget bill for next year, this was mostly good news for LASFA because it restores the $344,000 in budget cuts from last year and basically makes us whole. Um, and the $11 million increases for both TOPS and Go Grant are still in there. So um, good year for LASFA budget. Great. <clears throat> good news. Thank you for all your hard work. Any questions, comments for Bristol? All right, then moving on, we come to... Great, you can, you can advance it. You can advance it, Rhonda. Yes, this is just um, a, an excerpt of what we provide to the commissioner. The commissioner's update includes what you're seeing here with our virtual assistance sessions and where we are on that. We're also letting her know the professional development opportunities we're doing. And in addition to this, the commissioner sees all of the updates that you just saw with respect to the START uh, outreach, the um, outreach done through LFOS and their summer camp so that she knows about that, as well as those customer service comments. Uh, her biggest takeaways from this month's update were that our team got that comment that you saw where she said, you know, you cannot get much better than the best customer service I've ever received in my life. She was also uh, very, very excited about the start uh, video that she was able to see. So I'll be excited for Ms. Francis to be able to email uh, that to you all. That was also sent to the Na National College Access and Attainment uh, Network and they were thrilled to be able to see what we're doing too. So virtual sessions, again, uh, Ms. Francis is, uh, group is doing a very good job of that. And we know that even as we transition from COVID that this will be something that we will keep. Professional development, this is an opportunity that someone again in Ms. Francis's shop attended and we kind of rotate and make sure that all of our staff are attending professional development and all of them can share with others. So a lot going on and really, really proud of the way the staff's risen to the occasion uh, during COVID. Next Rhonda. Uh, as Dr. Cobb mentioned, the number one in the nation for the FAFSA pilot project um, and FAFSA in general. The pilot project was something we started this year to see if we could move that date up to give us a runway of moving the preferred date for the FAFSA from the July 1 date to the February 1st date. Again, uh, working with our partners at uh, education, working with our gear up in LFOS schools, uh, we were able to actually do very well. And I think we went from like 70.5 last week to 71.5 in a week. So again, staff and team are still working. This earlier date that we are doing this runway preparation for is critical because the earlier students complete their FAFSA, as those of you in financial aid know, the more time they have if they're selected for verification, the more time they have to be able to ask for special consideration or professional judgment. And even more importantly, the more time financial aid offices have to make sure that the aid they're eligible for shows up on their fee bill and therefore encourages them to be able to attend college. So very, very excited about that. Um, National College Attainment Network was excited about that, as was our interview with Louisiana Radio Network. So really proud of the work of the team because it took a team effort during this year to accomplish this. Uh, so very proud. Okay, next Rhonda. Okay, that goes into new business. Uh, Robin's going to give you the updates um, that we're doing for the legislature, but Ms. Coleman, as you ask about, we have completers fund on the horizon, still waiting for final approval of that Board of Regents would be, but Ms. Francis um, 
PICCOMS, um, Ms. Holmes, Ms. Malvo are already working on a communications plan, rollout plan for that uh, and how we would do that because we feel like that's a good runway for us to begin with seeing what's the most effective way to get the word out to uh, students and that will prepare us for the uh, Foster Scholars Program. So we'll turn it over to Ms. Lively. Can I, can I, can you go, before we do that, can you re refresh my memory on what that completers fund is, the completers thing is? Yes, completers fund would be designed, to, this is a special grant that the Board of Regents is availing that will provide financial assistance to students that are in their last hours of completing or students that want to come back uh, that, you know, left with a few hours on the table and want to come back and complete. So we're very excited about this concept. Um, they're looking at it first, it was going to be targeted towards uh, STEM fields. Now it's open to students in all fields, but there is going to be a preference for campuses working with students that are in the STEM fields because the commissioner is very well aware. Please remove any travel documents from the envelope and have them ready for standing by the conductor. I think, I think, okay, somebody needs to mute. But <laughs> this is, uh, she's very, concerned about the shortages in the healthcare fields and wants to see what we can do to target funding. So we will, as we get more finalized detail on that and it's approved, we will be showing and sharing that framework with you as well as the financial aid offices. But right now it's still in final approval. Thank you. Uh -huh. Other, any questions? Appreciate that. Okay, uh, Robin, new business. The first item of new business is rulemaking to implement the acts of the legislature that have passed, um, at least the House and the Senate. Um, it's House Bill 635 and Act 95 of the 2021 regular session. Um, House Bill 35 adds a course for social studies. It adds African-American history. Um, as a core course that can be used to meet those two elective social studies requirements. And um, let's see, it was SB 99, it's at 93, did pass. Um, that is what the majority of the rulemaking attached is for. Um, it changes references to regional accrediting agency to institutional accrediting agency and that is as a result of a federal regulation change. Um, it also allows students to qualify for TOPS on a score first obtained in July. Um, until a couple of years ago, ACT did not offer a national July ACT test date and the legend they are doing so now and the legislature had added that. Um, this also, the bill also adds a number of different types of exceptions um, that can be granted by the administering agency. Um, most of these are going to be handled through the exceptional circumstances, which means that they will go to the committee in-house and then they will come to you. And if approved by the advisory board, will go to the Board of Regents. Um, the first of those is um, allowing us or allowing you to consider um, late ACTs for 2021 graduates because of COVID um, and hurricanes. Um, as you know, there were a lot of issues, particularly in Southwest Louisiana this year, um, not only because of COVID, but then a number of different ACT sites had cancellations because of the hurricanes and I have not heard that there are continued cancellations of test sites, but this would allow us to consider those ACT scores of students who were not able to take it before graduation. Um, <clears throat> the other exception will allow you to consider in the future after this year, after we get past COVID and hurricanes, um, students test scores up through September 30th after they graduate from high school in circumstances where they were unable to take the test or unable to score um, on a test prior to September 30th of their high school graduation year if it's due to circumstances beyond their control 
and which are attributable to the administration of the test. You may recall a couple of years ago, we had a few students who were scheduled to take a test at a, te at a site that flooded, and that was in April, and those students had to take a June test. Um, and then this legislation also allows you to grant exceptions to the home study requirement in law that requires that a student begin a home study program no later than the beginning of 11th grade. Um, we've had circumstances where students have come to us asking for an exception because the student was diagnosed with cancer and was unable to attend traditional school because of immune issues. Um, we've had students who were severely bullied such that their parents took them out of traditional school. And in the past, we were unable to grant those. So now uh -huh. this legislation would give us that ability. That is not included in the rulemaking. Um, what is in the rulemaking is just the um, addition of African-American history and um, uh, adds the July ACT test date, changes regional accrediting to institutional accrediting, and the ACT exception for 2021 graduates. The rest of those are more informational. Okay. Thank um, you. Act 35 has not been passed. Uh, I had not been signed by the governor yet. Um, if it is not signed, then that section of the rulemaking adding that will be removed from this rulemaking before it is sent to the register for publication. Thank you for all your hard work on that. Um, anybody have any questions for Robin? If not, may I have a motion to approve uh, the rulemaking? A motion to approve the rulemaking. This is Charmaine Salford. Thank you, Charmaine. A second, please. This is Barry, I second. Oh, Barry and Charmaine, your name. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, good. Uh, so it's moving on. Uh, new business exceptional circumstances. Robin, we just have the uh, one, one request. That is correct. From Melody. And I'm assuming that we're getting, this is still a good demonstration of uh, giving, having finally got things working well so the staff can, can make more final decisions. Is that, would that be correct? Uh, over the past year, yes, that would be correct. Um, yeah. um, we got the COVID exceptions into the, um, objective circumstances, you have seen a, an extreme decrease in the cases that come before you under exceptional circumstances. Okay, so that, that's working well for you. Yes, um, you. And, well, okay, let me get, before I forget, so do I have a motion to approve the recommendation? This is Charmaine, a motion to approve. Good deal, Charmaine. Thank you. And a second, please. This is very a second. <laughs> All right. It's been moved and seconded to approve these. Uh, favor say aye. 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 Good job. Thank you, ladies. Uh, and uh, that motion carries. And now we move to the final thing, which is a public comment. No comments. No, thank you, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> I just a, a couple of things that, that I would like to just take a moment here. And that is, I'm assuming um, we is the, if there's anything that this commission needs to do, I'm sure the, the membership will be to do it to help move the uh, MJ Foster Promise program forward and mainly to help help you and the staff uh, get that done. That's, a, that's another thing. Um, anybody else have any uh, final comments? I could make a comment about MJ Foster. Um, it is not going to be um, effective until July 1 of 2022. That's when the program will um, start 
providing awards. So we've got some time to work with the various different stakeholders and to make sure that we've got rulemaking right and the way that we anticipate that it will work. Um, so I'm thinking that we will probably bring to you rulemaking beginning in October or November of this year. Um, that's why you didn't see it in this rulemaking, um, primarily because we've got a lot of background work that we sure. need to do before we uh, bring that to y'all. So, and a lot of and a, a lot of stakeholders to put. In. But I I am correct if I and I, I read the uh, legislation this morning that the Office of Student Financial Assistance uh, will be the the. I mean, I realize the Board of Regents is the administering agency, but you all will be the working administrative agency, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Thank you all. Um, and our next meeting is scheduled for <coughs> July. Uh, so uh, any other questions, comments? If not, I need one more time to have your names in the minutes. I need a motion to adjourn. This is Charmaine, our most Thank you, Charmaine. And a second. We got this, a second. All this right. is very a second. All right. Great job, ladies. Uh, so the meeting is now adjourned. Thank Marianne, you. Marianne, this is the